closing session of the 1995 International Science Symposium is called to order. During the past week, we have heard lectures from many of our distinguished colleagues. Now it is time to introduce our keynote speaker. Some of you have asked why an archaeologist has been chosen to deliver our keynote address. Well, he is here to inform us of some very exciting news. So it is my pleasure and honor to introduce to you Professor John Bergeron. My fellow scientists, I am humbled to be standing here before you this evening. I never dreamed of being in this position, and I don't mind telling you it is very intimidating. Nevertheless, I hope you will bear with me. I promise your patience will be rewarded. A previously undiscovered cave has been found in the south of France. This past December, a cave explorer discovered its entrance on the ledge of a rocky cliff high above the Ardèche River. The cave extends nearly a third of a mile into the earth and consists of natural rooms connected by a narrow hallway. It has been named Chavez Cave in honor of its discoverer. Ah, I see a hand up in the balcony. Is there a question? Yes. A very good question, and of course, a good question deserves a good answer. You see, it is not the cave itself that is the important discovery. It is what was found on the walls of Chavez Cave. Beautiful, wouldn't you say? Yes, it is extremely well rendered. But there's nothing unusual about finding graffiti in a cave. <laughs> it is unusual if the graffiti is 30,000 years old. You can't be serious. This is obviously the work of a modern artist, not a caveman. Has it been dated scientifically? I must admit, at first, I was just as skeptical as you. Who can blame us? We are scientists, after all. But in answer to your question, I examined over 400 paintings in Chavez Cave and tested each one by every method known to science. Be assured, this artwork dates back to 30,000 BC. It is indeed the work of cavemen, or cave women, as the case may be. The quality and quantity of the artwork is spectacular. Themes include bison, Dear, notice how the subjects interact. Horses, the animals are never stiff and static, but always fluid. An entire pride of lions and the movement and power of the animals is tangible. Have I answered your question? Yes, but I have another question. Which shows you are a good scientist. Thank you. Professor Bergeron, you say the Chavez Cave paintings were created as far back as 30,000 BC. Surely you realize that was during the Ice Age. Could that even be possible? It is not only possible, it's a fact. Once again, be assured, this cave art is no hoax. During the Ice Age, there were long periods of time when the glaciers receded and the climate was warm even more temperate than today. Animals were plentiful during those times, making possible an abundant life for hunters and gatherers with ibex. Mammoths. Panthers. Bears. 
cave hyenas, woolly rhinoceroses, all painted in exquisite detail. As an archaeologist, I would argue that these cave dwellers in the south of France were identical to us in physical appearance and mental capabilities. They lived by hunting and gathering, but given their advances in art, would it not be reasonable to speculate? They may have been as advanced in other specialized areas as well. destroyed rocks, hills, even mountains. The animals migrated to escape advancing glaciers, and people followed, moving in every direction in search of warmer lands. The journey took many years. The migration led our people to every corner of the earth. Some found warmer lands, others learned to survive the cold. Life went on for many generations. Then, ever so gradually, the sun began to regain its warmth and the ice began to melt. The melting occurred only by drips and drops at first, but then the drips and drops became trickles, and the trickles formed creeks, the creeks joined to form rivers, the rivers flowed to the sea, and the sea began to rise. <laughs> Clouds were formed and rain began to fall, day after day and night after night, <coughs> creating a great flood. The people who couldn't reach higher ground were swept away in the floodwaters. Our ancestors survived. Eventually, the floodwaters receded and land reappeared. Rivers continued to flow as canyons and caves were carved by the water. Seeds in the ground sprouted, producing plant life of every kind. The rich green plant life attracted a return of the animals. Our people followed the animals, and now we live in peace and abundance in our own Chauvet Cave, high above the Ardish River. And the story never ends. And, and the, the story, story never, never ends. ends.
for the entire cave community. Every great feast begins with wine! Oh, but not immediately. I shall drink no wine before it's time. <laughs> well said, Alphonse, and yes, we will start the meal off with an amusing little vintage I've been saving for a special occasion such as this. A special occasion? I'll drink to that! <laughs> oh, no, you won't! Please, Colette, tell us what we'll be celebrating. Marcel is putting the finishing touches on a new painting. He's been working on it for months, but no one has seen it yet. Promise me he's unveiling it tonight. I am so excited. You're still sweet on Marcel, aren't you? Oh, don't be silly. You're in love with this chisel jaw and baking muscles. That's enough, both of you. I admire Marcel for his artistic talent and his creative work. Just keep telling yourself that, Colette, and maybe one day you'll begin to believe it. Let's concentrate on the menu. After the wine has been poured, we will start with a fresh tossed salad. The main course will be wild game seasoned with an herbal rub. We'll serve that with a medley of sautéed vegetables. Washed out with more wine, of course. <laughs> Never fear, Alphonse. Our wine cellar is well stocked. And dessert. Surely there'll be dessert. You know I would never disappoint you. Dessert shall be cherry jubilee. Your secret recipe? The very same. We have much work to be accomplished. We better get started. Right, I'll get the wine. Oh, no, 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 you won't. I'll go to the cellar for the wine. You can start cutting up the meat. <laughs> Simone, you took the words right out of my mouth. My knife is sharpened Ooh. and ready. Guess who? Well, let me think. Could it be Pierre the musician? No, it is not Pierre the musician. Then perhaps it's Dion the toolmaker. No, Colette, it is not Dion the toolmaker. Hmm. Well, then it must be none other than the renowned cave artist Marcel. That's more like it. Say, how many men play this game with you anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so many I lose count. Oh no, I've lost count measuring for my recipe. Your secret recipe? Yes, my cherry jubilee, if it turns out. You make your cherry jubilee only for special occasions. What is this one? I'm keeping that secret. Well, it just so happens I have a secret, too. But I'll share it with you. What is your secret? You know that painting I've been working on for months? Oh, yes. Everyone knows you've been working on something new and exciting. In fact, you've been so busy with your painting, I've hardly seen you at all. Yes, I know. And I'm sorry about that. How is it you steal my heart and then desert me to work day and night on a painting? And you have stolen my heart too, Colette. But somehow, that painting keeps calling out to me. I understand, Marcel. You are an artist and you see things in your mind you wish to paint. But somehow, my paintings just don't seem to match what I see in my imagination. Marcel, you were about to share a secret with me. Oh, yes. Well, my, my secret is, I've decided to start over. You decided what? I'm starting over with my painting. Something about it just wasn't quite right. But it's a perfectly beautiful painting. <laughs> <laughs> How would you know that? No one but me has ever seen that painting. All right, I confess. Many nights after you were asleep, tiptoed in, lifted back the veil, and looked at your painting. But every night it was more beautiful. Surely whatever you feel isn't quite right can be fixed. It's too late for that. I've scraped away every trace. The cave wall is clean and ready for me to begin again. How could you, Marcel? 
Oh, it was easy. I just took a small rock and... <laughs> you are impossible! You seem angry. I don't understand. Just go back to your painting, Marcel. I need to be alone. Oh, please, collect. Very well, as you wish.
I can be. It takes sacrifice to create art. It takes struggles. From now on, I'm devoting myself completely to my painting. No more being distracted by Colette. Let her be angry about my art if she wishes to be. That's her problem, not mine. Well, it's been quite a day. I think I'll turn in and get a fresh start first thing in the morning.
But don't forget to keep a balance between work and friends. Oh, and by the way, it is morning. You can get up now. Wise one, it was all a dream. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Why are you sitting here looking so unhappy? I was just thinking, trying to sort out my life. That really can be a challenge. Really, there's just one thing I need to sort out. <laughs> Is by any chance that one thing a man? Well, they don't call you the wise one for nothing. <laughs> Ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. And of course, that man's name is Marcel. There you go again. <laughs> what has he done this time? All he ever thinks about is painting. Well, he is an artist after all. I know that, and I love his paintings. And his carvings, and his etchings, his art. <laughs> oh, so what happened? Well, you are the only one I would ever tell you. Marcel has been working for months on a brand new painting. This painting is unlike anything I've ever seen or even imagined. It's something completely new and different. Or should I say, it was. It was? You know how self-critical Marcel can be. He saw something that wasn't quite right, so he scraped the entire painting away and is starting with a blank cave wall. You say he scraped away months of hard work because he saw something even better in his imagination. Yes, he did. What an artist. What a creative spirit. What a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> he ignores me for weeks working on this wonderful painting and then... Oh, I forgot. This is really all about you. Well, of course it is. <laughs> Unbeknownst to Marcel, I was planning a great feast to celebrate the unveiling of his masterpiece, which no longer exists. I even started making my cherry jubilee. Your secret recipe? I, I would love a sample. <laughs> I threw it out. Oh. So you and Marcel are not so different after all. Oh, wise one, it's not the same thing at all. Really? Oh, all right, it is the same thing. In a way, I guess. Say, thank you, wise one. I know what I'm going to do. You do? Yes. The <coughs> two can play at Marcel's little game. If he can take away his masterpiece painting, I can take away my masterpiece dinners. What's good for the artist is good for the chef. Uh, I don't think I like where this is going. Mm -hmm. Until Marcel, the cave artist, produces this painting he has in his imagination, I, to let the cave chef, will produce no more dinners. Let everyone eat food prepared by Simone and Alphonse. No, please, Colette, don't punish all of us. <laughs> my mind is made up. Nothing's going to change it. I have served as chef for years. I've earned an extended vacation. Wow, I didn't see that coming. myself, 
Everyone survived my first efforts, and they will survive yours. We are honored to have your trust. Do you have any advice for us? Yes, Alphonse, I do. With your first dinners? Yes. Serve lots of wine. <laughs> Marcel, you have certainly outdone yourself this time. Hello, Dion. What a pleasant surprise. In what way have I outdone myself? You have upset Colette. And of what importance is that to you? Well, it's important to anyone who wants to eat. I don't understand what you mean. It's the talk of the whole page. Colette refuses cook any more meals until you finished your painting. What? You must be the last one to have heard the news. Colette says no painting, no dinners. That means only Simone and Alphonse to be our chefs. Well, that certainly does present a problem. A problem, the cave artist calls it. It's a crisis. It's a quandary. It's a tragedy. Let's not get carried away. All I have to do is finish my painting, and Colette will come back to cooking again. What painting? Oh, this painting. How long have you been working on that? Four months. We'll starve. This will never do. Thanks to our advances in tool making, we have become a highly successful hunting and gathering society. Why, <laughs> the Neanderthals would kill to have our technology. Uh, actually, Dion, the Neanderthals do kill. Never mind that. What I'm saying is, 
When we go hunting, we deliver to the cave the finest wild game. To have this prime quality meat rendered inedible by Simone and Alphonse would be uncivilized, barbaric, primitive, and not in a good way either. I get your point. But the longer I stand here talking to you, the longer it's going to take me to finish this painting. Couldn't you just cut a few corners? Excuse me? Yeah, I, I hurry the lawn. I mean, like, slap some paint on the wall and call it good. You tool makers take pride in the flint spear points you create. I take pride in my art. One of the spear you made was thrown in the woolly mammoth, and the point shattered. You would be humiliated. A careless painting would humiliate me in exactly the same way. It's not the same thing at all. The woolly mammoth would trample the hunter to death. Then you're not seeing the point. I think the real point is that Colette is beginning to realize she's wasting her time with an artist. And beginning to show interest in a certain tool maker. She is? I had no idea she liked me. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, idiot. Me. So then why don't you finish the painting so Colette will go back to cooking? Oh, Dion can't paint at all. <laughs> Pipe down, Andre. I guess we're going on a starvation diet. I hate diets. So it's settled. Now let me get back to work and stop you worrying. I learned much from my first attempt at this painting. Perhaps this time it won't take so long to finish. Thank you, sir. 
plenty of wine. Well, I hope someone is stopping grapes because at this rate, the supply won't last. Come on now, let's not be so hard on Simone and Alphonse. They're just learning. Their meals are bound to improve. Well, the question is, will we live long enough to see it? And we can't win. If we don't eat, we'll starve. If we do eat, we'll be poisoned. <laughs> At least we two, we um, tailors make use of every part of the animal that is not eaten. Those parts, bones, tendons, claws, teeth. We use it all to make clothes for the cave folk. We're tailors and proud of it. At least we're still pulling our weight around here. And that's a good thing for everybody. Well, what if we bought that the job? No tailors, no clothes, and how would that be? <laughs> Let's not even think about it. <laughs> You're right. Let's think about something else. Maybe we can figure this out. Zoe, why did Colette walk off the job? I think it's because she's in love with Marcel. Colette loves Marcel? I thought she couldn't stand him. She can't stand him. Well, why can't she stand him? Because she loves him. <laughs> huh? Well, does Marcel love Colette? He loves her very much. He just doesn't realize it yet. This is all very confusing. Here come the socialites. They know more about laws than anyone. I'll see what I can learn from them. Hello, girls. I have a question for you. A question about love. Oh, love! Of course, what is it you wish to ask? It concerns Marcel. Oh, Marcel. Marcel. Yes, yes, Marcel. What is it about these artistic types anyway? Is that your question? No, no. My question is about Colette. Oh, Colette. Oh, uh, forget about Colette. I believe she'd be no good for you. Right. Walking off her job shows just how temperamental she is. She is a walking recipe for heartache, if you ask me. Are you asking me? <laughs> yes, I am. And my question is, why does Colette refuse to cook for us? And then what does that have to do with Marcel? Wouldn't that be two questions? <laughs> Never mind, Earth. I'll answer your question. Her question's, Colette is in a snit because she was planning a feast for the unveiling of Marcel's new painting. But oh. Marcel. A feast? That reminds me how hungry I am. Marcel scraped all of his work off the wall and he did it again. Colette took that as a sign of Marcel rejecting her love, so she vowed not to cook again until the painting is finished. All of this misery for the sake of love. Love. <laughs>
so hungry I could eat a cave hyena. <laughs> Didn't eat me first. That Marcel and Colette, both so stubborn, they're perfect for each other. Say, I wonder if there might be some leftovers in the kitchen Colette prepared before she quit. Greetings, wise one. What brings you to our kitchen? I'm just wondering if you might have a small midnight stack hidden away. Oh, I can heat up that good soup I made for dinner. Oh, it, it, it was delicious. But, but I have a taste for a little something sweet. By some miracle, I mean, by any chance, is there a morsel of cherry jubilee? Colette's secret recipe? Oh, she keeps a secret? She was mixing up a batch just before she walked out. She was? But she threw it away. She did? <laughs> I retrieved it and baked it myself. And, and? I burned it. <laughs> he burned it. I see. Very well. We're sorry, wise one. That's all right. You know, rather than eat, I think I'll just go for a walk. This late at night? Well, there's a full moon, and the exercise will do me good. Be careful. This is when the animals come out. Yes, be careful in the animals. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I've survived this one. Another battle of the bands? That's right. We we battled a new rock band upriver. <laughs> they were easy to beat. All they did was bang rocks together. <laughs> Hearing them sure makes appreciate a person appreciate what we've learned in this cave. We're glad to be home though. Even with the full moon, it's scary out there. We heard hyenas prowling and wolves howling. And bears crawling. Well, that's your new song. Crawling, howling, and growling. Hey, that's pretty catchy, wise ones. They don't tell you the wise ones for nothing.
the wise one hasn't shown up for morning stories. He's been looking tired lately. Maybe he decided to sleep in. Well, that would be a change. He's always up with the birds. Well, maybe he's testing us, you know, to see if we can tell the stories on our own. Well, in that case, we better get started. That's right. He can walk in at any moment. Valentine, you are next in line to lead us. Take charge. Very well. Let the story be told. Let, Let the, the story, story be told. told. Long ago, when glaciers covered the land, our people followed the migrating animals, struggling to keep up with them. Food became scarce. I don't believe I've ever heard this story. <laughs> well, people could think of nothing but food to eat. Food, food, food. food. Well, maybe. Maybe we should try a different story. Our people followed the tracks of the animals in hopes of overtaking them, but still there was nothing to eat. No food to eat. No food to eat. Stop. I can't take it. Storytellers, have you seen the wise one this morning? No, Marcel. We were just wondering about him. He told us last night he was going for a walk. We were worried about him, so I went to his cave room this morning and he wasn't there. That's when I went to Marcel for help. I went to the tailors and asked them to search the whole cave. Marcel, we've searched the whole cave and there's no sign of a wise one. He's been gone all night. Where are the musicians? They were the last to see him. We, we, we told them it was scary out there, even with a full moon. Especially with the full moon. The prowling and howling and growling. What? Oh, never mind. Someone, go wake the socialites. Let's organize the search. We already asked the toolmakers to awaken them. Everyone, listen carefully. The wise one is missing. No one has seen him since last night. Wait, we're missing one more person. Where is Colette? Has anyone seen her? I saw her last night. You saw her? She stopped by just for a moment to tell me she's leaving Chauvet Cave for a while. Everyone knows you're the reason she's unhappy. So why did she choose you to tell all of this? She said you wouldn't care. So, two people are missing. Everyone, a fan out in every direction. Collecting the wise one must be found.
along with me, wise one. I would have been very afraid without you. To tell you the truth, I'd have been afraid to come here without you, too. <laughs> I just had to get away from our cave. Those walls were starting to push in on me. Why did you agree to come along? Well, for my whole life, I've heard about the Valley of the Neanderthals. When you said you were coming, the time just seemed right for me. Well, we walked all night. Do you think there's any Neanderthals in this cave? It does have that lived-in look. <laughs> I hope it isn't the home of a cave bear. We did hear a lot of growling as we traveled through the night. Well, let's keep our let's let's ex keep your ears and eyes open. Let's explore a little bit. All right, watch your step. Wait, I just heard something. Well, your ears are better than mine, but, but maybe it was just your imagination. No, this was a strange sound, unlike any I've ever heard. There it is again. I heard it that time, too. Let's get out of here. It's too late. There's a Neanderthal. Greetings. We come in peace. <laughs> Thank you. 
terrible. What's happening to him? For what? He was walking in the moonlight. What if he encountered a dangerous animal? Suppose he heard growling behind him, whirled around, and then looked straight in the eye of a saber-toothed tiger. Oh, come on. Uh, what 
else would explain it. Yesterday we searched in every direction and found nothing. Listen, Dio, this is no time to be jumping to conclusions. I suppose you think we tailors are jumping to conclusions too. We've been up all night making rope to tie up the Neanderthal. We know they're strong, so we will overcome them with our superior weapons. We're going to fight fire with fire. Wait, have the Neanderthals even discovered fire yet? Of course they have, but only when started with lightning. Please. Let's be reasonable and use our intelligence. The only thing that sets us apart from the animals is our ability to reason. Listen to the impractical artist trying to tell us how to solve a real life problem. Marcel, we are giving you one day to bring Colette and the wise one home. If you fail, tomorrow at dawn, we will attack. You have one day. Through dance. 
The wise one taught us how to tell a story with dance. <laughs> exactly what are we communicating? How about greetings, Neanderthals? We come in peace. <laughs> and our friends are missing. Do you know where to find them? <laughs> your help in their safe return to us. Oh yeah. And if you don't return them immediately, our other friends will attack you at dawn. Uh, let's strike that last remark. <coughs> Please, no threats. Remember, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. All right, everyone. We have a plan to follow, a story to tell, and a long journey to get there. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Stories about them. 
They're big. They're strong. They're fierce. They kill. They crush their nose. They may even be cannibals. Some might go so far as to say they're invincible. Hey, get back here. And that's an order. You heard the own, that's an order. I would remind you that we are defending the honor of our cave. Colette and the wise one are missing. We must march to the valley of the Neanderthals to bring them back. To be prepared, to be assured of preparedness, we will drill all day long. But we've been up all night making weapons. <laughs> we've had no sleep at all. <laughs> that will toughen us for battle. Uh, begin the drills. That is an order. Yes, sir. Troops, forward, march. It's a long march. You can't go back on your word, Dion. 
I will keep my word. If Marcel succeeds before dawn, we will not attack. The tailors and the tool makers are waiting for us. We are ready to march all night to the Valley of the Neanderthal. Surely you don't have to leave immediately. You have time for a cup of wine before you go. Just for good luck. Uh, we do have a little time before we march. <laughs> Alphonse, do, do the honors. By all means, Alphonse. Wine for everyone! <laughs> Oh, well, 
a short nap before we march is probably a good thing to freshen us up for battle. Battle? You silly boy, there'll be no battle. What do you mean, no battle? We'll wake the troops up right now and be there by dawn. <laughs> yes, one full day late. <laughs> what do you mean, one full day late? He means you and your troops slept all night, and then all day. And now we it's evening again. <laughs> He's telling the truth, Theon. Cool, you're back. We thought the Neanderthals had you. Yes, I'm back. And yes, the Neanderthals did have me. As an honored guest. To show them my appreciation, I taught them how to build a fire and cook a great meal. Wise one, you also have returned. Were you with the Neanderthals too? Indeed I was. It was Colette's idea. She, pardon the expression, wisely thought that the time away from the cave would be good for both of us. I'm amazed at your courage. Our people have always kept a respectful distance from the Neanderthals. They look rather fierce. We found them to be gentle and considerate. They learned from Colette, and I learned from them. Win-win. And as for the two of you? Lose-lose. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, we've all learned some valuable lessons these past few days. While you two were busy getting your beauty sleep, we chefs were busy working all around you, preparing a great feast for all of Chave Cave. A feast? What's the occasion? The unveiling of a masterpiece. Don't tell me Marcel finally finished his painting. Glut inspired me to paint it in record time. Hunger can be a great motivator. <laughs> Indeed it is, and it is now my honor to open the festivities let the story be told. Let, Let the story be told. The cave artist painted his masterpiece and unveiled it for all to see. Oh. The people were stunned at the beauty and originality of his painting. Others learned his techniques, and they too became artists. In time, the walls of the cave were covered with amazing works of art. Paintings of wild animals moving and interacting. Mystical vision for all to see. Colette and Marcel were married in a grand wedding. The tulip makers and tailors hunted wild game for the feast. And the socialites gathered flowers for the ceremony. Which was performed by the wise one. The musicians played music for dancing and the storytellers passed the story on to you. And the story never ends. <laughs>